Elegy with the ghost of Larry Levis in it. I used to like to say the names of corporations, never knowing they had no feeling for me. Bendor Furster, Bernardin, Stongs. They were sounds I couldn't understand, and so they stayed magic that whole century of childhood when stone lions whispered and junk sailed in the stucco of Helen's wall. There are so many things I still don't want explained, like the triumvirate of Nineveh, or Twas Brillig, or why I wept for Sennacherib. The exclusivity of the past can remain, a closed land without clocks, an eternal animate instant, really. So sail with me, Silver River. Every morning I worship this glitter and hold the small corrupt tugs to my heart as if I can't comprehend poison. Some illusions Nietzsche wrote, the fish hooks of his opus shimmering, are in fact necessary and not evidence of the herd mentality, but about keeping antimonies alive. I'm paraphrasing the day, of course, and the breadth of his desire as he waited for Salome's whip to lick his flesh pure and dirty. There is no elegy without death. We know this, right? But our era's anonymous poet, that 10th grade hacker of NASA, may beg to differ, slipping into another universe entirely, yodeling, death be not proud, from the technological Pyrenees, where the beginning of the long dash is not followed by 10 seconds of silence, and the untested emergency broadcast system is only a hobo now, as Norma from Jean Mance still calls them, perhaps warming its dot matrix paws above a polyethylene glycol fire. I know I don't want to die on Mars. There is little else I can be sure of. <laughs>